Hi everyone, in this lecture we will be talking about heredity. Before we begin, let's familiarize ourselves with some terms that pertain to heredity. The first one is alleles, and these refer to alternative versions of a gene. Next we have genotype, which is the whole collection of alleles possessed by an individual. And lastly is phenotype, which is the observable characteristics of an individual. Let's take, for example, eye color. The alternative versions of the eye color can be brown, green, blue, and these are all alleles. Now, the genotype is the genetic makeup of the individual that dictates its eye color, and the phenotype is the observable eye color that we can see. Now that we know this, let's now move on to heredity. In this figure, we can see a previously held belief about heredity. Here we can see a sperm cell and inside there is a small human. And the reason for this figure is that scientists previously believed that the offspring were only copies of one parent. And usually they believed that it was only the father who gave their genetics to their offspring. The first person to change our viewpoints on genetics was Gregor Mendel. He used true breeding plants and the reason why they are called true breeding plants is that whenever he crossbred them with each other, they always produced the same types of offspring. So he used pea plants in his different experiments, true breeding yellow pea plants and true breeding green pea plants. What he did was he cross-fertilized these two types of plants and as a result, the first generation of offspring, what we call as the F1 or the first filial generation, produced yellow pea plants. But he didn't stop there. He further crossbred this F1 generation with itself, and as a result, he found that the offspring were two colors of peas, yellow and green. And this led him to believe that the offspring actually inherit one copy of a gene each from the mother and the father. Aside from this, he found out that the offspring were either homozygous, meaning it contained two identical alleles, or heterozygous, meaning it has two distinct alleles. In this case, the F1 generation were all heterozygous, meaning they had two distinct alleles. During Mendel's different experiments, he came up with the laws of heredity. The first Mendelian law of heredity is known as the law of segregation, and it states that two alleles for each trait separate during gamete formation. And at the same time, they unite at random, one from each parent at fertilization. So this explains Mendel's original experiment, wherein he used true breeding plants, which were homozygous. One homozygous for the yellow P allele, and the other homozygous for the green P allele. After this, he crossbred them into a heterozygous F1 generation with one gene for the yellow pea and another gene for the green pea. And this applies to all sexually reproducing organisms. But the question is, why is the first generation yellow and not a combination of both yellow and green? This leads us to Mendel's second law of heredity, known as the law of dominance and uniformity. What he found was that the different alleles are expressed in different ways. There are dominant alleles, and they dictate the phenotype or the observable characteristic whenever they are present. They are dominant because only one copy of the allele is needed in order to show the phenotype. And then he also discovered recessive alleles or hidden alleles, and they dictate the phenotype in the absence of the dominant allele, in which two copies of the recessive allele are needed. And this is why the first generation of Mendel's piece were yellow, because the yellow phenotype was the dominant phenotype. In these experiments, Mendel discovered a 3 is to 1 ratio. This means that 3 quarters of all the different F2 generations exhibited the dominant phenotype, and only a quarter of the F2 generation exhibited the recessive phenotype. And this is true for all comparisons he did using two different traits. Gregor Mendel examined various inheritable traits in pea plants, and these include pea color, 
pea shape, flower color, flower position, pod shape, pod color, and even plant height. And for each of these different alleles, he always found one dominant form and a recessive form of each allele. Now, let's now take a look at ways that we can track heredity. The simplest way to do this would be to use a Punnett square. This is a diagram that is used to predict inheritance patterns among offspring. So in this example, we can see a very simple Punnett square showing only two genotypes. What you would do is you would just list the genotype of the female gametes on one side and the male gametes on the other side and combine these different genotypes in each square to reveal the inheritance pattern of the offspring. So here we can see that one dominant genotype from the female, here denoted by the capital letter Y, combines with one dominant genotype from the male. And so the offspring has two of these dominant genotypes. And here on these next two, we can see that each of the offspring has inherited one recessive genotype and one dominant genotype. And finally, here in the last square, we can see that this offspring has inherited the two recessive genotypes, one from the male and one from the female. In humans, since reproduction between different individuals is a bit more complicated, we use pedigrees instead of Punnett squares. These display the phenotype of each family member for the relevant trait. In this example, the relevant trait being displayed is recessive deafness, which we can see here in blue. We can also see the different sexes of the individuals in these different marriages. So square for male and circle for female. And these lines in between them indicate marriages between two individuals. And vertical lines show us their offspring. We can also observe that there are some red lines here, and these actually stand for marriages between blood relatives. Going back to Mendel and his laws of heredity, so far, the first two laws that we discussed only pertain to inheritance of one allele. But how about if you have multiple alleles that are inherited? This leads to Mendel's third law called the law of independent assortment. This law states that the alleles of different genes segregate independently of one another. So in his experiments, he used two true breeding plants with two alleles. The first had two dominant alleles, yellow pea color and round pea shape, and the other had two recessive alleles, recessive green color and recessive wrinkled appearance of the peas. And what he did was he crossbred them, and after he got the first filial generation, he then crossbred this with the same generation, and he came up with this Punnett square here. And we can see in this Punnett square that both of these different alleles are independently segregated of one another. What you observe here is the characteristic 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio. So we can see here that 9 of these offspring have both of the dominant alleles, yellow and round. If we count them, we can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 that have both the yellow and round alleles. Next, we can see that three of them have only one of the dominant alleles, and those are one, two, three. They contain the dominant allele for yellow, but the recessive allele for wrinkled. Then another three have the dominant allele for round, but the recessive allele for green, and these are one, two, and three. And finally, only one of them has both recessive alleles for green and wrinkled, and that is this last one at the bottom. So those were Mendel's three laws of inheritance. More recently, we have already come to know the chromosomal basis of inheritance. Back then, Mendel did not have any knowledge about DNA and chromosomes, but now we do. So we have found a basis to explain Mendel's laws. First is for allele segregation. This is caused by the separation of chromatids during meiosis. We can see on this diagram that each of the different alleles are found on separate arms of the chromosome. And as the gametes are created, each of these different gametes inherit one of these chromosomes and the allele found there. 
Another thing that we now know is the chromosomal basis for independent segregation. And this is possible if the two alleles are found on different chromosomes. In the case of Mendel, all the different alleles that he observed were found on different chromosomes. But we also know that independent segregation is possible on the same chromosome if the different alleles are far apart on the same chromosome. So in this case, we can see that in this chromosome, there are a variety of different alleles, but only those that are far apart from one another can be independently segregated. For alleles that are very close together, for example, this one that we can see here on the bottom, these alleles will not be independently segregated, meaning they will always be inherited together. We call this as co-inheritance. The reason for this is that there is not enough space for crossovers to occur in this area. Finally, let's talk about the molecular basis of inheritance. First, regarding the different alleles. Why are alleles different anyway? So we now know that different alleles are caused by nucleotide differences between homologous genes or genes with the same function. In other words, these different alleles are caused by mutations in the specific genes. In this example, we can see two alleles, one allele for the normal gene and another allele for a gene with the mutation. And here at the bottom, we can also see a wild type allele or the normal allele and a variety of mutant alleles that cause different phenotypes as well. Next, regarding the dominance of alleles, we know that mutations dictate whether the allele is recessive or dominant. There can be two types of mutations in genes. First is what we call a loss of function mutation in which the mutation causes the gene to either be truncated or deleted, meaning the function of this protein is hampered. And we also have gain of function mutations in which the function of the protein is enhanced. Now for dominant alleles, these are usually genes in which only one normal copy is needed for the cell to display a certain phenotype. Usually, these are gain of function mutations that we see in the gene. Then for recessive alleles, these are mostly loss of function mutations. This means that both of these genes have to lose their function in order for this allele to be present in the cell. All right, so that was a very short discussion on heredity. If you would like to learn more, please check out these references on the screen. Thank you very much for listening. If you found this video informative, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments as well.